Hello there, so it's been um, almost a week of uh, me hiding between the screens and uh, trying to do some shorts and videos without sound in the hopes that I will be able to restore my voice to keep up with my kids' homework as they are having final exams. But that actually didn't work and uh, I keep losing my voice for big chunks of time. Uh, hours and then I would um, have difficulty breathing so anyways this is not the topic today that I'm just explaining why I disappeared and I'm not trying to alarm anybody so today we're going to talk about what happened with my neurologist that I've seen lately okay <laughs> So I've seen my neurologist, he's not, he's not my treating physician, but he's uh, the private neurologist that I've seen before and he diagnosed me with dystonia, full body dystonia. And um, he's seen me eight to six months ago. And uh, he, because of this interval of time, he was able to tell how much of a decline I've had especially that when I sat down with him uh, with the first appointment he took uh, a lot of time to investigate and look into the information that I was giving him so he knows exactly what is going on and we, and we kept in touch I kept sending him emails and updates what's going on with my uh, health regarding that and uh, so he knows exactly what he was going to, to get however his response was um, somewhat I'd say painful to see that uh, there is a, a professional that is actually admitting to the fact that uh, yes it's declining more than they think they can actually handle and uh, he said this in his own words and uh, even though today I'm actually I'm, I'm, I'm better and I don't even know why even though I'm not sleeping and I'm not really doing so well but um, my mobility is not uh, that awful to the point that I actually just did the dishes so anyways when I arrived at his uh, office and he saw so my hands, you know, the neurological testing, the typical things. He made me, you know, like do this. And if you do this, you, you're not supposed to have your hands go curling inside. I'm trying to string, to straighten up them for you. And I cannot do this. And it, you can see that it, this is starting to shiver. So he saw this and then he described my hand movement and my body movement my legs etc and he said this is absolutely horrific this is terrible this is terrible and I kept repeating the same sentence like oh, more than once and he said that okay do you have God's number and I was like why I was like I just want to call him to um, ask him for just like a favor for this poor girl she needs a cure and I was like since you're already, you know, getting to someone who's resourceful, let's end war and famine and etc. And I was like, no, 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 just let this girl, I just want this girl to be healed. And I was just laughing, even though it was not a laughing position. And um, I was in so much pain, I was almost in tears and he could see that. He was trying to lighten up the situation. And he told me that the, the way that they can actually treat my dystonia is by injecting botulinum injections in the affected muscle. And how it's done is that he would start injecting the most affected muscles currently, which are my left body muscles more than the right side. So they would start experimenting on the lamp, on extremities, such of that. And then if it works, because it's it's not a guarantee, if it works, they would, you know, increase the concentration and then um, the amount of it, etc. And it's supposed to be monthly. I'm not sure if that would remain at monthly. And then 
he told me I, I, and I informed him because at the first appointment he had suspicions of focal dystonia and he wrote that that he had suspicions even though I told him I know you're the doctor but you say suspicions I know I already have it so by the time I was there and I was having my whiteboard and I had my notes printed out because I was I drove three and a half hours to get to the appointment and then three and a half back so it was a hell of an appointment to get to but it was really important so I had to have everything straightened out like completely accurate so I don't lose any key important information or if I would lose my voice I would have a backup plan so I had my notes printed out and in like good uh, font for him to read and I had my whiteboard so if he asks a question I would not have my voice to communicate I would reply writing on my whiteboard so he saw how bad my dystonia is getting and um, he was in shock and again he mentioned uh, the diagnosis of uh, the Minji which is a very rare form of a neurological disease and um, uh, people who have Minji would not uh, would not exceed uh, 40 years old because of the degradation of the disease that uh, the body parts was shut down one after the another and he said that uh, previously and then again he said that and I was like okay why are you saying this like oh, I don't need more diagnosis and then in that appointment he diagnosed me with uh, migraines and actually I didn't even know I have migraines I'm like I have enough troubles already I have so many issues and my issues they have sub issues like if I am having spasticity in my hands I'm also having so much pain in my neck and my shoulders and everything because of continuous spasticity so it's becoming more complicated I'm having more pain related to my muscle that I need to have you know other ways like more problems to worry about that are caused by dystonia now so it's a lot and then he's, he gives me a diagnosis of migraines and uh, he was asking me the questions of uh, does it uh, do you feel sick when you move when you're having a headache I'm like yes I do feel so sick like why is this happening and then he told me like is do you have ringing in the ear when you have uh, when you have a headache and that is something that happens a lot and uh, he asked other questions and I was like you, ha you have migraines and it shows actually on my MRI and he said I should be treated by monthly injections uh, he told me the name of the dr drug I will put the name when I'm editing uh, also monthly injections because I was trying to convince him like can you talk to my nurse surgeon maybe tell him please you have this super expensive amazing device 20 settings why don't you just manipulate them instead of leaving me in agony I would just like uh, I can only live a sedentary lifestyle and I would have 7 to 8 out of pain out of 10 and like wh why are you not manipulating the settings I'm not supposed to have a headache as a hydrocephalus patient and then huh, the neuro neurologist also pain specialist he told me oh, it's not related anymore this is a new issue it's a migraine like okay how many more issues can I have literally am I swearing to have every condition chronic condition to just acquire it in my lifetime <laughs> so this was, was my appointment with a neurologist and um, it's not much of a good news so this was the appointment it's not much of a good news but um, at least to me news and knowing what's going on is news and that's good and uh, regarding the diagnosis of Minji they still did not figure it out but I it's it's an option on the table 
and they need further testing to figure it out so this is what's been going on in my life so if you have anything about uh, epilepsy because i'm willing to do a video about it next uh write me down in the comments what do you want to know most common questions uh thoughts about it because i will be answering as a patient and uh, for the current time if you can look at this to see how i communicate when i'm having a very bad dystonia day so with that i'll leave you stay safe